Hey guys, Chris Americos here with another video for you. Today we're talking about verb aspect. And specifically today we're going to compare continuous and perfective aspects. Now when I say continuous aspect, I'm talking about present continuous, past continuous, future continuous. Some people also call continuous progressive. And when I say perfective aspect, I'm talking about present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect. So, what's the difference between these verb aspects? Well, first of all, let's back up a little bit and talk about verbs in general. First of all, we have verb tense. Verb tense is something like present, past, and future. Then we have verb aspect. Usually we think of verb aspect as simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. And there are some general ideas that we can understand about aspect that will help us understand present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect all together, or present continuous, past continuous, and future continuous all together. Because these aspects have some things in common. First of all, we use the continuous aspect to talk about unfinished actions. Actions that don't have a result, and just a process in general. When we use the continuous aspect, we know that there's one point in time, and this process happens during that point. We also know that this process started before this point and continues after this point. Sometimes we also use the continuous aspect to compare two different actions. So we might have one action that's using a different verb aspect and then use continuous aspect to say that this action happened at the same time as another action. Sometimes we use the continuous aspect to talk about something that has been happening for some time. We also use the continuous aspect to talk about something that's repeated, that happens again and again. Another reason we use the continuous aspect is to talk about something that's temporary. We know that it's not forever. And we can also use the continuous aspect to talk about something that's changing or developing. So let me give you a few examples of the continuous aspect. Right now, I'm making a video. This tells us that we have one point in time, the current moment, and that making a video started before this point and continues after this point. And at the current moment, it's in progress. Another example. In 2004, I was finishing school. This means that throughout the year 2004, I had different moments that helped me to finish school. And probably when I use the continuous aspect, I want to talk about something that's unfinished. So we really don't know if I finished school or not. We just know that I was in this process. When we use continuous, sometimes we want to say that an action got interrupted or stopped in the middle. So in this example, I was finishing school. Maybe something happened that didn't allow me to completely finish. Let's look at another example. I was cooking dinner when you called. Here we see that before you called, I was in the process of cooking dinner. And after you called, there's a question if I continued cooking dinner or not. And we don't know if I completed this action or not. We don't know if I finished cooking dinner. Another example. In December, it was getting cold. Here we can see that there was a change in the temperature or a change in the weather. Something was developing. Okay, so now let's look at the perfective aspect, which we use with tenses that are called perfect, or present perfect, past perfect, future perfect. Anytime that we talk about the perfective aspect, we're talking about two points in time. One point that happens before another. If we talk about present perfect, then our first point in time will be the present, the current moment, the current time. And the second point will be sometime before the current moment. Very often we use two different verbs or two different phrases to establish these two points in time. For example, now I'm a teacher and I have been a teacher for seven years. Here we see that there's one point now and a second point before now. And for the second point, the earlier point, we use perfective. We can also see in this example that these two points are connected in some way. We usually use perfect to show that these two points connect some kind of result. The result that happened in the first point is seen in the second point. Or experience. We got some experience in the first point and that experience is visible now in the second point. Or something is true. Something happened in the past, in the first point, and it became true now. We see that it's true now. We could even say that the first point causes the second point, or the second point is a result of the first point. If we look at past perfect, then we can see the same idea. 
In 2012, I had been a teacher for three years. This tells us that our first point in time, which is in the past, was 2012. And the second point, which happened earlier, influenced 2012 and gave us a result in 2012. So we see three years of experience as a result in 2012. If we look at future perfect, then we see that the first point is in the future and the second point happened sometime before that. For example, in 2017, I will have been a teacher for eight years. Again, we see that the first point has a result from the second point, the earlier point. In this case, eight years of experience. I hope that helps you understand the difference between the perfective aspect of verbs and the continuous aspect of verbs. If you've been watching my videos for a long time, then you should have already liked my video, you should have subscribed to my channel, and you should have left a comment. Until next time, Chris Americos.